put me in the middle, I don't know why. <laughs> Funny. That way we keep an eye on you. Yay, everybody's here. Nobody didn't show up. That's awesome. What's that? Thank you. So these are all our fans of Lost. Huh? <laughs> Y'all are lost. Does anyone have a toothbrush? The Walking Dead. Yep. Everybody here, Walking Dead? Everybody here? Right on, right on. Well, it looks like we'll moderate How about ourselves. Guardians of the Galaxy? Yeah! Yeah, I'm excited for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, me too. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> About a year later, it'll be real exciting. Um, so what? tell me, uh, uh, Lou. Yes. How did you uh, How did you come about uh, getting involved with the What is that show? The Walking Dead. Walking Dead. That, yeah. That was a pretty good gig, I tell you. Uh, interesting story. Uh, I had seen the the, the, the graphic novels we like to call them, and they'd come across my desk, obviously, because of being. Uh, attended to the horror genre, and I thought they were pretty damn cool and uh, and well done. Obviously, Robert Kirkman is uh, a genius. So, never thinking twice that they could actually pull it off as a television show until I was asked to come in and audition for the pilot. Can you just keep your answers under an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I auditioned for a character named Merle. Uh. Thankfully, they hired this guy. <laughs> and then a couple weeks later, they brought me in. They said, would you audition for Merle's brother? Who at that time did not even have a name, nor did he even have pages of dialogue. So I had to do Merle's dialogue as his brother. And so uh, and I, remember, I remember that uh, they were, they actually wanted me to tape some stuff so that the actors auditioning for Duro could sort of copy my accent. Yeah, I didn't that get that was tape. That was <laughs> uh, I, so I, I don't know of any actors that want to copy this accent. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thankfully they went, uh, got a guy, Norman Reedus, is pretty damn good. <laughs> hey, there's some dudes out there clapping too, that's all right. <laughs> you know, big spoiler alert is he's gay. <laughs> Have you noticed how he and Rick have that longing look? That's a bad buddy. They, they didn't have that longing. <laughs> and then clearly Axel came around. They said, "All right, we'll give you this guy." That's uh, that was a, a lot of fun. That's, that's how you did it. That's how it goes. That's. The, that's and sir, how about how about you, sir? How did you end up uh, getting involved with the Walking Dead? Well, audition. I didn't even know what the Walking Dead was. <laughs> I, honestly, I hadn't even watched this show when I was on the show. I probably saw season one and season two, and we were probably on our fourth episode. Well, we don't have time, really. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know, but we, we, we shoot these things, and then about halfway through the one episode, we get the script for the next episode, and so they're all, you know, oh yeah, we have our weekends off. No, there are no weekends off. No. There are no days off. You, once you start that season, you're working your tail off through, until the end because you're working on two shows at once most of the time. So. It's a sprint. Yeah, plus it's so hot out there. You know, when, yeah. when you get off the set, you just want to rest. It'll drain you, really. Yeah, big time. So I actually auditioned for a character named Mouse. And then once we got to the set, the guy who played Big Tiny, he was like, yeah, I'm here for the character Mouse. And I'm looking at him like, wait a minute, I'm here for the character Mouse. <laughs> So come to find out, it was, you know, he was big tiny and I was Oscar, so we're here today. What's interesting about this panel is, uh, who, who, can, who can tell me what's interesting about this panel? Your hat. Well, that, my, my this panel happen. has standing room only. Everyone's but yes, that. that's right. Every, yeah, not, we we got there, right there standing up. There is uh, right on. Right. We truly are the dead. All three of us, right? We're all gone. So we, are, we are called the, this panel is called the Talking Dead. Yes. <laughs> so we are talking, y'all. 
Yeah, and, and, and now, Michael Rooker, tell me something. <laughs> How did you end up being a part of The Walking Dead? Well, I gotta tell you, man. I, I, it was a funny story because I knew Frank Darabont about 18 years ago, and I was supposed to do one of his projects. And I ended up having to back out of his project 18 years ago, and he, he didn't like that. So 18 years of uh, not... Yeah, but Morgan Freeman was so good at Shawshank. Yeah, no, you know what? I could have tanned. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we ended up, we ended up hooking back up, and um, I ended up getting, getting the gig as Merle. And uh, my friends who were casting directors, uh, um, uh, Lisa May from Canada and Craig from Canada out of uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, they called me and said, dude, we, there's this role that is just perfect for you. It's this country, redneck, shit-kicking kind of guy that, that gets handcuffed to some pipes on the rooftop and he cuts his hand off to get away from zombies. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> now, he does what? To get away from what? What is this thing about anyway? It's just, uh, they, they told me a little bit more about it and I said, well, I, I, I did the role. I like the role. You know, if the guy cuts his hand off, I'll do the role. And so I, I said, uh, I'll do it. And they said, well, there's just one little problem. Um, some of the producers have a heart on for you. And I was like, what do you mean? Uh, I, I take it it's not a good heart on. And they said, uh-uh. <laughs> So that 18 year ago gig that I backed out of came to bite me in the ass in the end, 18 years later. Here is Merle Dixon, ready to be cast, and people have a hard on for me. What can I say? And they've had that hard on for 18 years. So no matter how, I, I, I missed out on a lot of stuff. And I didn't know about it. See, I didn't know about this. this uh, misconception of what took place 18 years ago, see? And that's when, that's when you have to communicate with your agents better. Well, actually your agents don't necessarily communicate with you. They tell you one thing and they did another thing. That's what happened. And so once we cleared that all up, I ended up getting, uh, again, cast as Merle. And the first day me and Frank Darabont saw each other on the set. I swear to God, it was as if we had not missed a beat for 18 years. We were like, oh my God, dude! And boom, best friends right away, right off the bat. And, and if it wasn't, wasn't for him, I, I wouldn't be here today because, and I definitely would not have been in The Walking Dead more than three episodes. That's all I signed on for, it's like two or three episodes. But he wrote that monologue, that four and a half minute monologue. And you know how, that, 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 you see how that thing's structured and how it ends with the hand and the, the hacksaw and all that stuff. Well, that was written by, that was written because of the first episode, second episode that I played and he saw the work and decided, nah, nah, nah this guy's coming back. Mm -hmm. Sometime, somewhere in the future of this show, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it so that this cat comes back. And so he wrote that four and a half minute monologue in a way that if you, if you go back and you look at it, you know, you know this guy's coming back. And, uh, and, and actually my, my role became the boogeyman. Of right. The, of the, yeah. the, you know, season three. Every, yeah, everything, every time something happened in like season two, two oh, yeah. Merle did it. <laughs> oh, Merle set that up. Merle shot that deer that the bullet went through the deer. And hit the I know he did it. Merle lured those zombies to that. So where was Frank when Oscar got shot? <laughs> well, that wasn't that wasn't Merle. That was some crazy cop. It was the funny man. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's how I got into it. It was really quite a quite an interesting story for so for any young actors out there, man. Make sure you communicate with your agents and make sure you communicate with the producers. And Always pack your own shoe. Don't you jump don't, out of an airplane. Do, don't, don't listen to anybody. Make sure stuff is Take care tied up in a little bow and make sure that you, uh, you try your best not to burn those bridges.
Yes. So any more questions? Uh, no. Uh, I don't have any more questions. Uh, General Ruger, uh, we, we, why don't we address then um, how you left the show? I'm still crying. <laughs> there are people who are still crying out there. I mean, I swear it's so true. <laughs> you're hurt, you're hurt because it was an emotional uh, roller coaster for you. Uh, the arc of that character was so well written and, and performed. You know, I, but you know. It, it's like you you you're developing this thing and you're and you're seeing where it's going and you're going like whoa this is this is crazy man and people you know I like to tell people that you lost a lot of animosity toward Mo as soon as they left me on that rooftop as soon as that key dropped and I'm on that rooftop chained in the hot sun for three, four days, I'm dying of thirst and, and hunger, and zombies are about to eat whatever's left of me, and I'm praying to my God, and all sympathy left the group and came right to Merle. And from then on, you were wanting and rooting for Merle to come back and do something. Revenge, kick some ass, Press cut some <laughs> shit off, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know, but you were, you were. And, um, and no matter how big it 